All right, Shalom. First and foremost, giving all praise and glory and honor is due to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Bahakwadash, the honors to the elders and apostles of the Great Millstone, who rule well, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, and Shalom to the men of the Lord that are prophesying, preaching and teaching in the highways and byways in sincerity and in truth. Shalom Barakatham. And uh, I'm going to say a lesson here. I'm going to do a lesson here um, regarding the event that happened in. Uh, Genesis the 19th chapter regarding Lot's wife. Um, and this is just a lesson, you know, a warning really, that a lot of the women, you know, women that we deal with in the world, women in general, a lot of them are going to adopt the same spirit that Lot's wife did in the time of, uh, of those two cities mentioned in, uh, really five cities mentioned in Genesis 19. So this is the Wikipedia of it, and there's images, I believe, of it too. This is uh, what they believe to be the pillar of her, you know, but you got to be careful with, you know, there's another one here um, where uh, people like to idolize these things. But nevertheless, we know there's lots of evidence that this actually occurred, the, the Lord overthrowing this place. But let's read what Wikipedia has on it. It says in the Bible, Lot's wife is a figure first mentioned in Genesis 19, the book of Genesis describes how she became a pillar of salt after she looked back at Sodom. And we're going to take a quick look at that word, look back to see what that means in the Hebrew. All right. It says she is not named in the Bible, but also, but it's, but it's called Ado or Edith in some Jewish traditions. Now these, these are like rabbinical texts that are not biblical. Okay. That they're, they're, they're just, they're Jewish rabbinical text that uh you know Amalek basically uh written down over the years but there's nothing to substantiate what her name was you know but it says she also is referred to in Deut deuterocanonical Deut books at the book of wisdom 10 and 7 the new testament and Luke 17 32 all right um so you can see the story of Lot's wife begins when two angels arrive in Sodom at, at even at eventide and were invited to spend the night at Lot's home. So we know the story. All right, let's go down. It says a pillar of salt named Lot's wife is located near the Dead Sea at Mount Sodom in Israel. The mission states the blessing should be stable. They kind of go on. We don't. The mission has some stuff in it, but uh. You know, you, it's best to stick stick to the scriptures. But this is basically like the backstory of of uh, of Lot's wife. Now we'll go to the actual precept here. All right, in Genesis the nineteenth chapter, um, and we'll start at uh, we'll start at eighteen, Genesis nineteen and eighteen. It says, and Lot said unto them. O oh, not so, my Lord. Behold, now thy servant has found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. So this is the Lord basically giving him an out to get out of the city, because now it's apparent that the Lord is getting ready to destroy it. All right? So this is, this is basically Lot pleading with the Most High, man, who was a righteous man, by the way. Now skip on down. Verse 22, it says, Hasty, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. All right, this is the name of the city in the area where, where, where uh, Lot fled to, okay? And it says, the, the sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord Jehovah reigned upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord Jehovah out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. All right. Now, the Lord basically wiped that whole area out, that whole valley. <laughs> you know, he basically torched it, man. And this is symbolic of what's coming to America. All right. But the main point here, it says, verse 26, but his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Now, she was specifically told not to look back. All right. Now that's also symbolic. Uh, you get this word "look back." It's a, uh, it's Nabat. 
and that's Strong's H5027. And it means to look, behold, to consider, to regard, see, respect. All right. So basically, she was reminiscing on things, man. She was sad to see the, the, those cities be overthrown. And we know how wicked these cities were. That That's the spirit that a lot of our women are going to be in. man. You got to you got to make your peace with that, that your women, you know, whether it be mothers, sisters, cousins, your, your wife, whatever it is. Some, some a lot of them are just going to love this world more than they love the next man. And there's going to be a consequence to that. In other words, we have to be prepared uh, to lose them. All right. Because you can see when she was looking back when the Lord told her not to. It's likened into us like looking back uh, into the world and the kingdom of heaven and, and desiring this place to continue, man. That's what this whole thing means, man. I'll quickly go to Hebrews. Shalakia. 10 and 10. Hebrews 10 and 38, it says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him, man. All right? So we as men have to set the example, number one, but if our women don't get in order, they're, they're, they're weak. You know, the Lord didn't make them the, the, the vessels of integrity and courage and all these other things that, that, are, that are likened unto righteous men. All right? So you, it's got to be understood that most of our women, whether it be family members or your wife or anybody, your daughter maybe, you know, they're going to have a spirit of fondness on this place. And the Lord is ultimately going to make the decision to cut them off, you know, if they're not, uh, if they're not right. You see? And, and how does a woman do right? A woman does right by getting on board with your program, man. She's not communicating with the Most High directly, and it's and it's not in her her to, to do it consistently, man. She she's gonna be made right by getting by getting on your program, following the 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 orders that you put down, man. You know, and if she's not with that, then that's 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 her that's her lot, man. It says, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. You'll tell them that, that you'll tell a woman that it's perdition. It's it's dangerous to look back, but but but, but they know better in their head. They know better. Oh, it's it's you know, it it'll pass. You know, they have this nonchalant attitude until judgment comes. It says, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. You see, so that that's the situation that we're in. You know, I was speaking to my mother earlier today. It just dawned on me. You know, it, it, it's like you can tell you can tell them, but but it's like all of these things that are coming, and they'll say, "Yeah, okay, yeah, it makes sense." They'll say that, but ultimately, you just know in their spirit they they love this place more than they love the kingdom of heaven to come, man. Ultimately, they're okay with Esau and rulership. Ultimately, they see things, whether it be you know. Uh, retiring, going on vacation, their their career or whatever it is, they they value those things more than the kingdom of heaven. And 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 as men, we have to understand what would the Lord do to us if we were to look back. You see, that the Lord is the Lord's gonna cut us off, man. You can read Ezekiel the ninth chapter. All right, starting at verse four, you'll see that very clearly. But last precept, it says Psalms 85 and 8. It says, I will hear what the, the Lord Jehovah Bashim Yahweh Shai will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly, man. If you're telling family members, if you're telling, you know, relatives and and and, and or your woman or your or whoever the truth, and they reject it and they go back into the world. Well, you've done it. When you read Ezekiel 3, you have to warn the wicked of their wicked ways. And then the blood is off of our hands, man. You know? All right? It says, surely his salvation is not nigh them that fear him. All right? So, ultimately, that's what it boils down to. They just don't fear the Lord. You know? And you can't put the fear of the Lord in, in somebody. That, that, that has to be something that the Most High gives them. You know? It's a blessing that I have any fear of the Lord at all, man. You know, it's not of my own will. 
that's a, that's a blessing. And you pray every day the Lord don't take that fear away from you, man. All right? Because what's getting ready to happen out here is going to be real bad, brothers. All right? It says that glory may dwell in our land. And you can read the rest of that. But that's basically the point, man. Hopefully you brothers were edified. Call for Lord Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Bahashim. 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 B